The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit every single week. Lady Ada user powered engineer and help you. Yes, you find the things that you want on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is a great search of the week? This week! This week, we're looking at Zener Diodes. So let's go to the computer and I'll show my moment of Zener. Um, so Zener Diodes are great for a bazillion things. Uh, one of the projects uh, that I've been working on is this protocol interface that is supposed to be 5 volt compliant. And one of the ways I'm doing that is using this Zener clamp to make sure that the inputs coming into these GPIO pins never really get above 3.3, 3.6 volts. And I've realized, uh, you know, people will realize how amazingly wonderful Zener diodes are. They're great. They're wonderful. I mean, they're a, they're a dessert topping and a floor wax. Um, some fun tips can be found in uh, this document. It's just called the like, three volt tips and tricks. Um, and uh, the particular technique that I mentioned, there's actually a couple in here. Um, so one is using a Zener as a very low cost uh, regulator or power supplier, like whenever you need a voltage reference, plus minus 10 volts, it's not precision, but sometimes it's okay. Sometimes you're just like, look, I just need about three volt input to bias something. Um, you just need a resistor and current going into the Zener diode. Um, and this will kind of sit at whatever, you know, this is rated as the 3.6 volt Zener. Ah, uh, this will be at around 3.6 volts. Um, so that's a Zener power supply. And there's a couple of notes about it. Um, a Zener clamp, that's the voltage protection circuit that I mentioned before. Um, the voltage going into here, as long as this resistor makes the bias into D1 about five milliamps or so. Um, or or less, yeah. We're looking for five million. I mean, it's not you depending on the wattage. Uh, this V out won't exceed the reverse voltage of the Zener diode. There's also a um, great tutorial by Evil Mad Scientist. It's over ten years old, but Zener diode uh, never go out of style. So check it out. Introduction to Zener diodes by uh, EMSL, um, wonderful scientists over in California, and they talk about all the different uh, tips and tricks that they use zeners for um again like uh you know simple voltage regulators uh level shifters um, vol um making you know stacking them up to make uh, multiple reference outputs from a higher voltage supply um because they'll have that positive they act like a normal diode when forward biased with like a 0.7 volt drop but on the reverse bias they can have an adjustable drop. And so when you purchase the Zener diode, you'll have to specify what the reverse voltage breakdown voltage you want is. Um, and we'll show that uh, more, more tips and tricks. Um, here's a fun one. You know, they use this to drop a 36 volt input into a five volt regulator. They just need to like lose 10, 12 volts. A 12 volt Zener will do it as long as it's rated for the amount of current uh, and then the voltage drop across it. So that's something to watch for. Um, Zener diodes, let's go to DigiKey and check what they've got. First off, um, you might be wondering, am I at the DigiKey site? Because the logo looks different. They just did a logo refresh. Uh, they, they're going with a brighter red color, which I like, and they're losing the dash in the DigiKey. Um, I think they did a post on social media also about um, their rebranding. I like it. it's a little bit more modern. Um, I, th I personally think that the D like the, the, the D in the center of the D, like reminds you of the catalog sitting on my shelf for, you know, decades. Maybe that's what the D stands for. So they've got Zener diodes, do they ever? Um, hundreds of thousands of them almost. So there's Zener kits um, and there's Zener diode arrays, but I wanted to look for the single Zener diodes. Um, looking for, you know, active ones. Um, in stock, not marketplace. So that gives us down to, you know, 9,000. So the reverse voltage. So there's a couple of standard voltages. Um, there's a few, you know, families that are popular. I tend to use the MM series. It's made by, you know, they're made by multiple different um, manufacturers and they come in kind of set voltages like every 0.3 volts. So it's like, 1.8, 2.1, 2.4, 2.7, 3.0, 3.3, 3.6, etc., etc. Um, they go very, very high, but 
for for what I often am using um, the universe for, which is again clamping um, a signal down from say five volts down to 3.3 volts. I like to use a 3.6 volt zener. Now you might be wondering why aren't you using a 3.3 volt? Because oftentimes I'm not biasing with a full mil five milliamps, and most of them are rated that voltage that they're rated at the nominal voltage you only get when you're putting a significant amount of current through but if i'm connecting this up to some other digital signal i'm not usually getting a full um five milliamps in fact this 1k resistor is limiting me to um you know 1.5 uh volts across 1.5 milliamps through the 1k resistor um, so this is going to be, you know, 1.5 milliamps. I, I've measured it. It never quite gets to 3.6. It's usually like 3.2, 3.3. So let's look at, again, but you can get any voltage you could possibly want, including 3.3. So let's look at 3.6 volt Zener. And then I'm going to do surface mount because personally, I'm going to be using surface mount, but they have through hole. You know, it's one thing you can definitely get through hole forever uh, are Zener diodes. And basically you can get, you know, any package you like. And the thing you're going to want, want to watch for is, um, oh, wait, did I click 3.3? Sorry, I meant 3.6. So let me, let me delete the nominal voltage and then go back and I'm going to select nominal 3.6. That's what I meant. Um, up. Apply and then don't forget you always have to have you know zener diodes they only work when there is a, a resistor you always have to have a resistor to uh limit the current and the voltage that's going to appear at the uh so that this reverse voltage has there's some the, the zener diode has like a 3.6 volt reverse voltage if you try to put full five volts directly on it um, it doesn't like regulate it it'll it'll try to pass all that voltage through um It'll draw a lot of current and it'll blow up. So you need to have, much like an LED needs a choke resistor, you do need to calculate your choke resistor. How do you calculate it? It depends on the milliwattage of the diode. So you have to figure out with that voltage drop across the reverse biased Zener, 3.3, 3.6, and how much current is going through it, you can't go above the milliwattage. So it's a trade-off, right? If you're, if you're trying to drop a huge amount of voltage, with a lot of current, you're going to have to go big. So these tiny sod 323s, you know, good for those little 1, 1. 1.5 to 5 milliamps, little little signal level shifters. If you're trying to use it in a power supply, um, like we showed with the evil mad scientist example of using it to drop voltage into a regulator, you're going to need something much, much bigger. Uh, you'll need like a 1 watt or a 2 watt zener. And they make them in those um wattage but you might have to go with through hole um to get that physical size or you could always you know use multiple ones this one looks like uh you know it's chunky it's a do 219 ab 800 milliwatts you can get them in you know you can look up here for the power max um you can get them up to like a watt or watt and a half but again we're doing it for signal we don't really care and i do like the sod 323 um I want it to be nice and compact. So I'm going to pick um, that for the size. The rest, the 123s are a little bit bigger. I don't, I want to kind of minimize space. And, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot, but this one's a really, you know, two, two and a half cents on semi. Uh, so I know that they're gonna be able to always have them in stock. I'm not zoom in. Um, come and tape in real, and then, you know, look at the data sheet for, um, specification. I will say that they're jelly bean parts. The MM3Z series, you know, they're available from multiple vendors. Um, they'll just have the different 3V6 where the XXX is in the, in the data sheet. Um, you'll get different voltages from 2.4 to 7, 75 volts. Um, but still not a bad idea to look, especially if there's, um, an impedance and what current it's expected. Again, five milliamps is pretty common. That's a good idea to look. And the variation, you will get variations. So the 3V6, like I said, can go as low as 3.4 to 3.8 at five milliamps. Um, 
but I don't usually drive them at that uh, current, I usually drive them at a lower one. It looks like once you get to the higher voltages, they're expected to be driven at two milliamps instead. So Zener diodes, they're amazing. Uh, really, they do everything. Um, I love to throw them into my designs for all sorts of like random voltage reference uh, protection circuitry. Um, and they're really cheap, two cents. So uh, check out some of those links. We'll have them in the description so you can read the Evil Mad Scientist Guide as well as the microchipped uh, three-volt tips and tricks PDF for these wonderful Zener diodes.